should review a little bit what happened during the year. And I thought I would do this uh, a la David Letterman and give you some of uh, what I thought were the highlights of the year. Now, uh, so some, of, yes, doctors. some of these things you had to be there, I guess, to appreciate it. So uh, if you are here with a band member today uh, and you don't know what's going on, well, when my kids were in school, a teacher once explained to me there's two kinds of students. If one student goes home and tells their parents just everything that happened in school, everything the teacher said, they know everything that went on. There's another kind of student that uh, goes home and when you ask them what happened in school, they say nothing. So uh, you'll find out, I guess, what kind of a uh, person you're sitting next to tonight. And if you're a band member and these don't make any sense to you, then uh, shame on you. These are the top 11. Nice even number. Uh, starting off with the uh, 11th highlight of the year, Dukes and Dixieland concert costs us $6,000. Luckily, we take in $7,000. Number 10, guest conductor prefers to listen to clicks rather than hear the band play. <laughs> Highlight number nine. Marv Bunch wins the men's best looking legs count. It's true. <laughs> Number eight. Clarinets better than ever. Paul Thurpin inspires all I envy with new barrel. Number seven. John asked the band to learn to play with the eyes closed, their eyes closed, in preparation for Painted Post's 200th anniversary. <laughs> we had to be there too. <laughs> Number six. No surprises at Watkins Glen concert. Rain once again. <laughs> Number five. Another year with no handshake between the conductor and the concert master. <laughs> Played up a couple weeks ago, but I figured I was fairly safe, even though it was, it was a concert. <laughs> Number four, our band was invited to perform at the 1994 meeting of the Association of Concert Bands.
from the concert. <laughs> and he really thought it was excellent music. <laughs> but he was very disturbed by some of the announcements. <laughs>
That's all the comments from the announcer, but that's another story. And finally, there's the matter of musical ability. <laughs> say that was the least important of the criteria. <laughs> so I'm going to present this to Marv, and uh, there's one thing I neglected to, to mention, and that's uh, what we're going to call this award. <laughs> Actually, uh, deciding the name for the award was, as they say, a no-brainer. Over the years, there's been one person who never misses a rehearsal, never misses a performance, never misses a parade. Someone who has performed much of the legwork needed to pull off successful concerts, guest conductor visits, and joint concerts. Someone who has been responsible for our band having contact with nationally recognized composers, having played with the U.S. military band, and having shared the stage with the Dukes of Dixieland. And finally, there's someone who has withstood our at times less than stellar playing, our casual marching formations, our constant chatter during rehearsals, and all of our good-natured barbs, skits, and quips. So it's only natural and fitting that this award will be known as John Strange's Award. John, come on up, please. Thank you. Thank you. You are my friends and my family, and I'm very proud to be a part of this class. 